This video is brought to you by the Intel Core i5 4670K Unlocked Processor. Add an Intel 520 Series SSD to your Haswell system for unbelievable overall performance. Welcome to a very special outdoor unboxing. I basically dragged a dining room table out into the yard with me, and we are going to be checking out the TT Esports by Thermaltake Knucker. Now, I originally thought that said Knuckler, and uh, so my initial impression was, really? A keyboard that you operate like this? No, probably not, actually. Uh, so the Knucker is a plunger gaming keyboard, which got me pretty excited about it. And the reason for that is that plunger switches are a type of keyboard switch that I have never encountered before. So they are a sort of like, they're a membrane switch, okay? So to be clear, these are not a mechanical switch, but they have been engineered and integrated into this keyboard by the Thermaltake team in an effort to simulate the tactile experience of a mechanical switch with a membrane switch that is obviously coming in at a lower price point than what you would pay for a mechanical keyboard such as the Mecha G1, which is also a thermal take keyboard. So in terms of included accessories, we've got ah some replacement keycaps. So they give you WASD keycaps as well as your arrow keys that you can replace on the keyboard as well as a keycap puller. All right. Come in a little baggy like that. We've also got the keyboard itself as well as a Thermal Take uh, TT Esports Battle Dragon sticker and then the manual, which hopefully you don't need for a keyboard because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Knucker in this particular video. It has a couple of unique features. Okay, so there's the plunger switches, which are kind of like what they're saying, and I haven't tried them yet. I haven't touched this keyboard yet. What they're saying is that it's a lighter mechanical switch feeling at a lower cost, it's only 15 million key presses for the total sort of rated endurance compared to 50 million for a Cherry MX switch, but they should be a lighter and therefore more comfortable for some people. Now there's a couple other unique things. Check out these S buttons here. Those actually change the repeat rate of the keys. So you can go anywhere from 1X to 8X by holding function S1, S2, S3, S4. This looks like a feature that was actually built specifically for one of their sponsored gamers, which is very cool because a lot of companies talk about how they work with sponsored gamers to design their peripherals. But a lot of the time it really feels like the company designed the peripheral and and then went in search for gamers to put their stamp on it. Um, not going to name any names, of course. So, <clears throat> plunger switch offers response feeling like a mechanical switch, enhanced anti-ghosting function with, for up to 12 keys with USB and 16 keys with PS2. Oh yeah, and that uh, repeat rate changer only works with PS2. Um, plunger switch enables excellent gaming elasticity with life expectancy up to 15 million keystrokes. So let's have a look at this. They also say they're quieter than mechanical switches. They sound about like blacks to me. So in terms of the audible level here, I want you guys to, I'll get my mic in nice and close. Okay, so they sound about like a Cherry MX Black, which is a very, very quiet mechanical key switch by comparison, sort of compared to all the other ones, maybe even closer to reds. Uh, the other sort of unique feature is Function F12 illuminates the Battle Dragon down here. And other than that, it's a fairly standard keyboard layout. This right here is a cardinal sin, though, for me. Um, long shift keys, long enter keys, and long backspace keys are a requirement for, uh, for, for getting sort of the line of seal of approval because I have small hands, and here, if you actually, we're going to switch places. I think this is known as crossing the axis. Am I, am I right, B-roll? Um, so what happens for me is when I'm on the home row here, if I reach here, I can, you can already tell from the limited flexibility in my hands, I can barely reach this, let alone this. Like my hand will move from the home row. See that, that L? I'm, I'm not able to keep my finger on there. So that's, that's a problem for me. Uh, but it might not be a problem for you, especially if you have larger hands than I do. And let's get impressions of the, sort of the back of the keyboard. You got your little razors here. This is good. I love it when manufacturers include this, where you've got a little rubber piece here, along with the rubber piece here, so it actually doesn't slide even when you elevate it a little bit. The wrist rest is non-removable on this keyboard, and that's probably par at least partly due to the fact that this is illuminated. And let's get some impressions of the actual keys here. So they do feel like they have a tactile bump, they definitely do. Are they mechanical key switches? Are they replacement for mechanical, mechanical key switches? See, you've probably never seen anything quite like this before. No, they rebound very quickly though, which is nice. 
um, a feature of membrane keys, so that, that's something that we kind of expect to see. They have a very, it feels like a shorter, no, maybe not a shorter travel, hard to say, but they have very small keycaps. And if I had to complain about something on the keyboard, then it would be that the keycaps have a bit of a wobble to them. You see that? So while the actual plunging of the key switch feels more like a mechanical, usually a Cherry MX keyboard tends to have, uh, tends to have a bit of a tighter fit on the keycaps. Can you see that B-roll? Usually tends to have a tighter fit on the keycaps because right now it feels a little bit unsteady. Like if I press on one corner of that key, there's more resistance. Whereas if I press it directly, then there's less resistance. That said, I don't think this would slow down my whoop, my typing in any way, so that's not really going to be points off. Actually, it feels very natural to type on. Uh, they're using a unique cyan print on the keycaps themselves, so it doesn't have white printing on it. It has kind of a, a blue color printing on it that looks quite unique. And I guess it's probably conclusion time at this point. So what is the Knucker? It's a very unique keyboard. It's definitely better than other mechanical keyboards. From what I've felt in my limited time with it, I can already tell you guys there's no question there. It is closer to the mechanical experience. It doesn't offer the same durability, and it doesn't have the same kind of build quality that you'd get with something like a Mecha G1, but it is better than other mechanical keyboards. So it's kind of like how, you know, the Logitech G15 Gen 1 holds a special place in many gamers' hearts, because even though it was a mechanical keyboard, it was a cut above mechanical keyboard compared to the other stuff out there. So I guess that makes them kind of similar. Better membrane keyboards. Is this a good thing? Yeah, probably, because not everyone's gonna be able to drop 80 bucks on an entry-level mechanical keyboard, 80 to $100. Some people are just gonna stick with membrane, so we'd rather they at least have a better membrane keyboard. Thanks for checking out this unboxing and first look. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.